Good morning. This is Dr. Hansa Das and I welcome you to my channel History with Hansa. Let's start today's uh, video with a new series which is Imperialism and Colonialism with special reference to uh, India. Now this is going to be an introdu introductory lecture in which I am going to sketch out what my upcoming videos will be all about. So uh, in order to understand the economic history of uh, modern India, it is essential to make a, to understand a theoretical concept of uh, imperialism and colonialism. So in this lecture part wise we will discuss what imperialism and colonialism are all about and then we will take up a case study of India. So uh, to understand imperialism we have to understand the various schools of thoughts which have presented their own views on imperialism. And uh, in fact, several views have been put forward on the origin and concept of imperialism. Most of the theories uh, related to imperialism have linked it with capitalism. And gradually over the centuries, a number of schools of thoughts developed on the idea of imperialism. So uh, basically, uh, we are going to talk about all these uh, theories. And uh, there were uh, liberal Marxist, neo-Marxist and neoliberal theories. From about the mid 19th to the mid 20th centuries, uh, the liberal uh, theory of theories of imperialism became quite popular. The main protagonists being Hobson, Schumpeter and Max Weber and the manner in which they tried to link it with capitalism. Then uh, in the early 20th century, the Marxist theories of imperialism uh, developed, which were basically uh, based on the ideology of Karl Marx and Frederick Engels and Rosa Luxemburg, Bukharin, Lenin and Hilferding uh, have given their theories in this regard. Now, a critique of the Marxist theories of imperialism was presented in the neo Marxist theories of imperialism, which came to be known as the dependency school. And in our next video, we will discuss the neo-Marxist and the neoliberal theories, the neoliberal theories being a critique of the neo-Marxist ones. So uh, in different videos, we will be talking about separately the liberal theories, the Marxist theories, the neo-Marxist theories and the neoliberal theories. Now, uh, imperialism uh, naturally leads to colonialism. And the country which is subjugated by a metropolitan capitalist country is described as a colony and what happens in a colony is colonialism. So uh, in England in the mid 18th century industrial revolution had begun and uh, a capitalist system had developed in England. England was looking all over the world for colonies and particularly in Asia, Africa and Latin America. It was searching for colonies. It was in this process that India became a colony of the Britishers. So when we take up a case study of uh, uh, India and talk about how British imperialism spread in India and how India became a British colony, we need to look into the stages of uh, colonialism in India. So uh, colonialism in India or British imperialism in India spread basically in three different stages. And in uh, a separate video, we will talk about the different stages of colonialism in India. So the first stage was the period of monopoly trade and direct appropriation, which is also known as the period of East India Company's domination from 1757 to 1813. The second stage of colonialism is known as the colonialism of free trade during the 19th century. And the third stage is known as the era of foreign investments and international competition for colonies. So one uh, entire video will focus upon the stages of colonialism in India. Now, uh, colonialism in India and British imperialism had uh, completely uh, stagnated the, the Indian economy. And uh, in our next video, we will talk about the effects of colonialism because practically all sections of Indian society, be it artisan, peasant, worker or merchant, they were affected by colonial policies. And so it is necessary to talk about the economic impact of colonialism on uh, India. Uh, in this section, we will talk about commercialization of agriculture, uh, rural indebtedness, deindustrialization, famines in colonial India and drain of wealth. Commercialization of agriculture, how uh, the Britishers forced the Indian peasants to grow cash crops for the market and the Indian peasantry was virtually paralyzed. 
which uh, led them uh, into indebtedness they uh, got into the clutches of the money lenders and they became indebted to the money lenders for life uh, in a similar manner deindustrialization was taking place in india uh, this, the rural and uh, handicraft industries of india had been destroyed because of british imperialism and uh, in fact there is an entire debate on the industrialization by european and nationalist scholars in which they present different views so we will talk about this debate then the manner in which uh, because of uh, the uh, economic impact of colonialism famines took place in colonial india which ravaged the entire countryside and finally the drain of wealth the theory which was propounded by dada bhai noroji in which he described how the wealth of uh, Uh, india was drained out to england to finance uh, in the, uh, to finance england's industrialization to finance england's uh, capitalist system so in a separate section we will discuss all these uh, effects of colonialism individually so please watch out for my upcoming videos and uh, video 1 will talk about the liberal theories of imperialism video 2 marxist theories video 3 neo marxist theories and neo liberal theories and then the next video will talk about colonialism and the different stages of colonialism in india and finally we will have separate videos on each effect of colonialism so please watch out for my upcoming videos and if you have uh, any question or if you want a separate lecture on any of these uh, topics please write down in the comment box and if you have not liked and uh, subscribed my video till now please do so thank you so much